Hey, you guys, today we are doing the baseline test. If you've done this before, you can go ahead and fast forward till we get to about to start. But if you haven't yet, let me go ahead and walk you through what it is and the different movements and modifications. So first off, the baseline test is a workout that we do to just kind of test where you're at. And so we're gonna start with Tabata sit-ups. Then we're gonna take a minute rest. We're gonna do Tabata air squats. Another minute rest, Tabata push-ups, minute rest, Tabata jump overs with a minute rest. And then we're gonna go into a plank hold and we're gonna record the time. So what is a Tabata? A Tabata is eight rounds and we're alternating between 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. And so we do that eight times and then you'll have your one minute rest before we move into the next movement. So equipment that you need, if you have it, if you don't, that's perfectly fine. We're gonna make it work without, is you wanna have yourself an ab mat. If you have one of these, this will help with your sit-ups. If not, don't worry about it. Doing it on the ground or a yoga mat or carpet is going to be just fine. If you have a dumbbell, we're going to use this for our hopovers. If you don't, a shoe will work fine, a water bottle, a can of tomato paste. Okay, just something that is about this high and that you're going to be able to hop over. And then in case if you can't do regular push-ups on your feet or on your knees, you might want to have some kind of box or bench or couch that we can do some incline push-ups too. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the different movements with you and just take note as far as what you personally want to do for your baseline test and then we'll get ready to do it. So first thing is sit-ups. If you have an ab mat, you're going to put the thicker part right along your butt, tailbone area, right in like that. And for a sit up, we're laying all the way flat with our shoulder blades on the ground. I always like to touch above my head and then throw your arms forward and touch at your feet. We want to make sure that we're breaking parallel here, that we're not stopping here, that we're coming all the way up. So just by touching my feet, that helps me have a touch point to make sure that I'm going all the way. So just like this, every time you come up, it's one. Now, if you don't have an app mat, that's fine. You can do it right here on the ground, just like this. Now, if you're having a hard time doing sit-ups, maybe you're close, but you just can't get there all the way. If you actually put your feet underneath a couch or have someone hold them or a weight, that'll give you a little bit of leverage to use your legs a little bit to get your body up. Okay, so that's one modification. Another modification is that we can just do crunches. So for this, I don't recommend putting your hands behind your head just because you don't want to pull on your neck too much. So same thing, touch above your head and you're just going to lift up enough to get your shoulder blades off the ground. Same thing, if you want to put your feet underneath something to give you a little bit of leverage to pull yourself up, you absolutely can do that. Okay, so those are our sit-ups. You're gonna work for 20 seconds, then you're gonna take a 10 second rest and you're gonna keep a rolling count of how many reps you do in the full Tabata, in the full Tabata time, okay? The next movement that we're gonna to move to is the air squat. So with the air squat, you wanna stand with your hips underneath your, uh, your feet underneath your hips. You wanna make sure that your toes are facing forward. And throughout this movement, you wanna make sure that you can wiggle your toes. So wiggle your toes right now. You wanna make sure that you can do that during the whole movement. So the first thing that needs to move is your butt goes back. When you're moving it out of the way, you're able to wiggle your toes. You're gonna to come down into the squat position. You're gonna stand back up and squeeze your glutes at the top. Now, what happens if you don't move your butt out first, if you just go straight down, you end up being on your toes and the weight's in the front part of your body, which is what we don't want. So butt moves back, squat it down. I can wiggle my toes here at the bottom and I can wiggle them the whole way up, okay? There's not much modification for air squats besides not going down as far. So just find you know, your comfortable spot where you can make sure that you're doing it correctly and just hit that point every single time. Our next movement is the push-up. So for your push-up, you're gonna put your hands underneath your shoulder blades, your body flat, you're on your toe. You could basically put a board from your heels all the way to your neck. Make sure to keep it in a neutral position. You're gonna lower your body down, touch your chest and push back up. 
What we don't want to see is those quads touching the ground. So we don't want you worming down and worming back up. We want it flat body up and down. Now, one thing you'll notice about my hands as they're underneath my shoulder blades is my arms are rubbing the sides of my body. They're not out like this, pushing up. They're in close, it's under control. I touch my chest, I push it back up. So if that's a little bit too hard for you right now, from this position, your next modification is to just drop your knees. Same thing, we're gonna touch our chest, we're gonna push back up, keeping that board like position up and down. Another modification, like I said, if you have a box or a chair, a cooler, a bench, you can go ahead and you can do incline push-ups. So you can do those standing up, same thing on the flat board. I can touch, push up, touch, push up. My arms are still rubbing the side of my body. Or I can drop to my knees and I can touch and push up just like this. Just make sure you make note of what you do. So the next time you do this test, you can do the same thing or maybe modify in the more difficult direction. Okay, after we get done with our push-ups, we're gonna do our jump overs. For your jump over, this is where you're gonna take your weight and you're gonna stand both feet on one side of it and you're gonna hop over, there's one. Hop over again, there's two. Now, get yourself in a rhythm, going just like this and as many as you can do during that 20 seconds, then you get a 10 second rest, shake it out and then you're gonna go again and keep that running count. Now, if you can jump two-footed, I would encourage you to do that, okay? It's okay if it's slow, it's okay if it's just one at a time, but challenge yourself to do the two-footed hop if you're able to. Now, if you're not, modification is to come on the back side of your object and you're gonna do a toe tap. So we're gonna tap here, tap, 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 and it's just one foot moving at a time. Try to get a little bounce in there, okay? Or you can step tap just like that, or you can step tap over the top just like that. So a few modifications, if you're not able to jump or if it causes some pain, you can absolutely do the taps or the step overs, okay? We work for 20 seconds. We keep track of how many we got. We rest for 10 and we pick it back up wherever we left off. And we're doing eight rounds of that, okay? Once we finish our hop overs, we're gonna be moving into our plank hold. So for a plank hold, we're coming down almost in push-up position, except for this time we're gonna be on our elbows. Our elbows go underneath our shoulder blades. Our body is flat. Our arms come straight out from our elbows. And you're just going to hold it like this. What we don't want to see is butts up in the air like that. No, no, no. I'll bring it down. We want flat. Or we don't want to see it sagged and putting that pressure on our lower back. So holding it here as long as we can go. Now, if you can't hold this for longer than 10 seconds, I want you to drop to your knees and still holding that same position, hold it just like this. Make sure that your abs are in tight, your glutes are tight, your shoulders are engaged, and you're holding as long as you can, and that's what you're gonna write for your plank score. All right, now that you know what you're doing, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So if you're not warmed up yet, hit pause, make sure your body's warm, that it's ready for this, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, Tabata, eight rounds, 20 seconds, and we are gonna have 10 second rest in between. Then between our movements, I'm gonna go ahead and set a timer on my phone for our minute rest. So you have everything that you need to be able to do this with me right now. So we're gonna go ahead and start in 10 with our sit-ups. Count them. Second rest. So wherever you left off. So I got eleven. Next time I start again, I'm going to start with number twelve.
Now make sure that you're working the whole time that you're able to. Get that last rep in. Don't quit early. You are doing awesome.
¿Estamos?
And this is okay.
minutes on that your own on one of your first workouts maybe, or maybe you're repeating this because you've been in it for a few months, but 
um, you know, as you continue to do this, you're going to get stronger, you're going to get better, you're going to get faster, you're going to have more endurance, your movements are become going to become more efficient. And that's what we want our exercise to be. So thank you for being here. And if you have any questions, don't be afraid to reach out. We'll see you later.